Yo, what's good guys? Key P, BeatsByKey.com. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in today. In today's tutorial, we are gonna be talking about recording and editing tips in FL Studio 20. Don't worry though, if you do not have FL Studio 20, that's okay. The tips and tricks that I'm gonna be showing you and using today, you are able to use these in any versions of FL Studio. I am currently on a Mac operating system, but whether it's Mac or Windows, no matter what you use, these tips are still going to work, so you don't have to worry about that. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. So right away in FL Studio, I wanna show you the setup. It looks like a lot is going on. Up here we have the beat, and down here we have the vocals. So the vocals that we will be using, he goes by the name of Starbound. He's an artist that I work closely with. His music can be found in my description. I actually produced the beat on this as well and did the mixing and mastering for it. For the mixing and mastering, I also do what is called vocal presets. I use the Jaden Smith vocal preset. The link is in the description in case you are interested in checking those out as well. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is actually setting up your recording folder in FL Studio. A lot of times artists jump right into to FL Studio, record their vocals, and go from there. There can be a couple issues, especially if you are like me and purchased a MacBook with 250 gigabytes of storage. That's a problem when recording because recorded files have to go somewhere. So I'm gonna show you what I mean right now. So what you do is you go to Options, you go to Project General Settings, and in your Projects folder, this Data folder is gonna show Auto. Most FL Studio recordings, when you record, is gonna be placed directly onto the computer's hard drive. So although when you record, you're probably only going to use about five to 10 megabytes, depending on what you record and how much of it you record, but that five to 10 megabytes can turn into a lot of recorded files if you don't place them in a, in a proper folder. So how you do that is it's simple. You just go to in the data folder selection, you go to this folder and as you can see, I already have mine set up. I have mine personally set up in a Mac backup hard drive. So I'm assuming if you are a music producer or an artist, I'm assuming you have like an external hard drive. If you don't, I would suggest you get one. This will save you room on your Mac or your PC on your hard drive. That way it stays running fresh. That way you can save room on your computer and everything seems to run smoothly. The next thing that we are going to do is tips on recording vocals or before you start recording. I have a video already showing you three habits that you should do before you record your vocals in FL Studio. Watch that video because that is going to give you tips on, on what you should do. This is kind of piggybacking off of that video tutorial. So the first helpful tip is figuring out what to record. A lot of times people record when they press this record button, um, they go into the mic, they have their mic set up. Again, I show you how to record vocals in FL Studio in a lot of my videos, so make sure you know what I'm doing here. They select this, they go to the input, they select the input, they make sure that this arm disc recording is on. The one thing that they do is they press this record button and you need to select this in order to record. Sometimes they make a mistake on what to record. You know, do they record into Edison? Do they record into the playlist? Once they press the record button and press okay, the pop-up window disappears for good. So to get that pop-up window again, all you gotta do is press Option or Alt on a Windows, click this recording button again, and it'll ask you what would you like to record. For me personally, I do not choose audio into Edison. What I do is everything. And when I select everything, if I'm already in the playlist, FL Studio is automatically going to detect that and record the vocals from there. The next thing that you wanna do is make sure that the 321 sequencer is set up. That way it gives you or your artist time in order to record your vocals. If this is set up, this is set to everything. You just wanna press play. And once you press play, it's gonna count down, three, two, one, and then go. And then you start recording your vocals. Everything's good, grand, wonderful. The next tip that I'm gonna talk about is setting up your vocals to make sure that there's no latency issues or anything like that. Now, when dealing with latency, a lot of times people have their plugins on a master channel or plugins on your actual mic to record in. The thing is, you do not wanna have plugins in general turned on. Let's say you do have plugins in your verse or intro. Again, you don't really want that, but the easy way to turn them off is enabling these and turning them off like this. Depending on your computer speed, you also wanna make sure that the buffer size is 
at a small length. Right now I have mine turned up all the way to 20 milliseconds. You don't necessarily want 20 milliseconds when recording because there will be some latency issues. This is going to be based on how fast your computer is as well, picking up vocals. However, there is going to be some RAM issues depending on how fast your computer is. The buffer length or the buffer size that you want to be at is right around five to seven milliseconds. If you can, you don't really hear a difference then and you can record as many vocals as you want. Make sure you have that on and you should be good. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is the hotkeys when editing vocals. The two main hotkeys that you're gonna be using or the two main tools that you're gonna be using up here is going to be the slice tool right here and the draw tool right here. You can either click on and off and honestly, that's kind of a nuisance going back and forth. Let's say that you are in the playlist and you can see here I've made many cuts in his vocals because there's a lot of unwanted sounds that I like breaths that I didn't feel like were needed in the song. What I did to highlight that, by the way, I used command and left click and just highlighted the whole selection. What you can do now is make sure that the snapping tool is on and it's online and you hold shift left click and then let go of shift to drag it down. There you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase these and how I'm doing that is holding down the right click and to erase everything. And I'm gonna extend his vocals right here that we recorded. The next thing that we're gonna do is select this cut tool and you can hold shift and click, left click. And then if you hold, if you keep holding shift and right click at the end where you wanna cut it, it will cut that whole selection. That will save you time when holding shift and left clicking and then you would have to go back to the draw tool and then you can right click to delete it. Um, that will save you a whole lot of time just messing with that cut tool. An easier step to do as far as cutting the vocals, you can either use shift C and it will select a slice tool or you can hold shift plus P and it will go back to the draw tool. So those are just hot keys that you can use to quickly go back and forth. Another method that I actually use, I have a mouse that I got from Razer um, that has programmable buttons on the side of it. And what I did was I just programmed the buttons to make it so it's shift C for one of my buttons and shift P for the other one. So it goes back and forth. So that way it's it's at the click of my thumbs to go back and forth between the draw and the razor tool or the slice tool. That's just another way to save time. You don't necessarily need it. You can definitely use the hotkeys within FL Studio, but either way, it's going to save you time regardless. The next thing that we're going to do is zooming in and using both these, the timeline bar and the scroll timeline. So this is going to be helpful when zooming in. Most of you may just use this. You may left click and zoom in and out this way and that's a that's definitely a good way to, to do things but there is easier ways of zooming into this so we can get a closer look at the recorded vocals the nice thing is you can use the scroll wheel and you can just zoom in and out like this if you just highlight over this timeline bar and zoom in and out then if you hover in the timeline bar use the scroll wheel to go left or right so again you can zoom in here go left and right here the next thing that I want to talk about is highlighting a certain part using this, the time bar here. Again, I'm going to reference my other video that I made and why it's so important to have these labels. If you don't have them, don't worry. I'm going to show you two ways of highlighting a certain part in the mix. A lot of times when artists ask me to mix and master their vocals, they just want to hear a certain part or maybe just a demo part. And maybe you just want to send uh, like a, an example. What you can do is just double click this label and it's going to highlight everything up until the next label in the timeline. This is nice too, because if you wanna just highlight a selection and export that to the artist, you certainly can. Another way that you can select and highlight a certain part is by taking the draw tool, double left click and just hold and highlight everything. That's a great way, but let's say that we only wanted to highlight just the pre-verse and we got some of the hook here. And you know, you could double click and highlight again. Oh, I missed it again. You could just keep doing that back and forth, but there is an easier way of selecting the highlighted parts that you actually want. So let's go ahead and start with double clicking and highlighting this. And let's say that we highlighted over the hook. Don't worry, what you can do is right click, hold and drag it to only highlight the pre-verse part. And you can use this, you know, on any side of the 
uh, playlist. So of the timeline, make sure you're highlighted over the numbers. Otherwise it won't work right here. It's just going to act as if you're just right clicking one time and not holding. So just make sure that you have it above the timeline and these should work just fine. So again, that was just uh, a couple beginners recording and editing vocal tips in FL Studio 20. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys' time. If you can, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Anything and everything helps. So I appreciate your guys' time. I hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.